Hello there and welcome to the 13th Real Podcast. This is our podcast where we talk about films, games, TV, music, YouTube, pretty much anything that's caught our eye in the world of entertainment. Uh, my name's Ash, Liam and Crippy in the house. How are we doing, gentlemen? I'm good. Good, good cheers, Ash. Good, good, good. Uh, right then, so we're going to kick this off. We set ourselves a little target of watching uh, The Menu. I think that was your choice, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was dying to see what you boys thought of it. Yeah, because uh, was it right? You'd seen it twice at the cinema. That's right, and it's one of those where I felt that even if you didn't like it, you'd have plenty to say about it. You know, you'd yeah. always have a strong opinion. It's one of those movies where there's so much to talk about. So that's the one there: uh, Ray Fiennes, Anya Taylor Joy, and Nicholas Holt. I'll let you kick us off then, Crippy. What What are your thoughts? I mean, obviously you've seen it twice. So you must have liked it. Ah, oh, thought it was a breath of uh, breath of fresh air. I, I I watch a lot of movies. So um, even ones that I, I know aren't going to be too great. So when I saw the menu, I had no expectations. I think I saw one trailer and I knew it wasn't going to be solely about food. I knew there was going to be a dark element to it. So I was thinking, OK, this must be something about this movie for them to produce it. You know, it's not going to be a boring movie about food, is it? They're going to, there's going to be something about this movie, that's, they, why they've created it, why people are going to see it. And as you're watching it, it's just, you know, there's something sinister coming but you just can't quite put your finger on it yet because it's all calm you know the chef's a bit unhinged perhaps he's very particular um and you're sort of waiting for him to maybe blow up but oh god i just i thoroughly enjoyed it it was everything i wanted in the movie and it, i felt it um you didn't expect where it was going to lead to and then you uh it's just enjoyable it's funny and I think it sort of subverts the horror genre a bit as well, because you can't quite call it a typical horror or, or even a horror comedy, is it? It's a bit of a bit of everything. It's got everything there for a person. So, yeah, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Probably one of the, my favourite movies in the last few years. Yeah, I wrote a review for it for the website, um, the13threel.com. Um, and I put that it's, it's classed as a horror on IMDb, but I'm, I'm not sure it is, because no. I get why they would say that, because you've got that all the tension. But it's yeah. more, more of a thriller than a horror, I'd say. Absolutely. There's no scary monsters or anything like that. But no. I was the same as you. I think I'd maybe seen the trailer, but I couldn't remember a lot about it. Just saw a lot of online buzz around it. Yeah. And just went in blind. As, actually, as it turns out, after I watched it, I watched um, Jeremy John's um, review of it on YouTube. I don't know if you watched yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turns out I'd already watched that. <laughs> and it's just gone yeah. in one yeah. ear and out the other because I hadn't seen the film, so I had nothing to. He won't spoil it, will he? Either he'll he'll sort of just no. describe it and won't he'll keep those bits hidden. Yeah, that's what I like. So yeah, I'd already yeah. seen the review, but obviously I had no film to attach it to, so it just kind of escaped my brain. But like you, absolutely loved it. Oh, it's great! Absolutely loved it. I was yeah. watching it thinking, all right. I'm interested. I'm annoyed. That's everyone yeah. in this is a total prick. Yes. And there's and a they, reason for it. Yeah, and I'm just like, right, yeah. I don't like these people. They're too pretentious. They're making me feel stupid. <laughs> 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 and then like, the more it went on, it got to a certain point where I was thinking, I'm not even sure if I like this. And then right. I finished and I was like, I'm not sure about this at all. And then I couldn't get it out of my head. For like yeah, hours. Exactly. I was just yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. And I was like, no, actually... Yeah, I love that. that was it's really so bold, amazing. isn't it? In a way, it, it really takes a chance that you know that you're going to enjoy what they do because it's quite, you know, Obviously, there are loads of indie movies where directors go crazy, but for a movie that's quite mainstream, I felt they really went out there with this one, and they took risks that some people might not like. But I really appreciate that they did that because I, I, I just I love the humor of it. I thought it was absolutely great. It's kind of one of my perfect movies in a way because you've got all the characters that are important to this movie in one place. So you're all in one place and it's all about character building and then the challenges that you're going to see before you. And then there's a message behind it. And it's those kind of movies I absolutely adore. So, yeah. oh God, I could, I could just watch that movie over and over it's again. Where everything hinges on the actor's performances. And if they don't nail it, the film falls apart. Absolutely. Everybody nailed it. And you just forget that they're, you forget that, the actors you just you took you know they their performances totally suck you in into mm. that world and and you're just thinking about why he acts this way and his and the, and other the characters you're just thinking about their dynamic with their partners and everything so i was really yeah totally engrossed in it all the looks between like especially annie taylor joy and ray fags where they're just like almost trying to figure each other out 
Yeah, there was so much like... unsaid, wasn't there? Yeah. With those, and but you knew quite early on that there was something different with her, which was why um, that was he. There was a connection there. Mm. It, just from subtle looks, you knew that there was um, that relationship was going to be important to the story. And then as as it's going by, you kind of realizing that he's mocking Nicholas Holt's character uh, quite a lot, and that was really entertaining as well. And then you see that <laughs> the move is kind of leading towards that thing of. He doesn't like those pretentious people that don't actually care about you know the food. They just want to be there to say they were there, or they're pretending that they're smart, that kind of thing. So I absolutely loved it. I loved the message behind it. Yeah, it was quality. Liam, you've been very quiet, mate. Sorry, we've talked all over. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, I was in when I was watching. It, I was a bit like you, Ash. I was watching. It, I was intrigued. What's going on? And when it finished, I was like, "Could we watch this twice?" <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm like. Oh, he's watched his it's twice. a slow he's, burner, he's isn't it? I know it's a slow burner. Twice. And then, I mean, use talk about it, and like, it was good. I mean, I don't think I'd watch it. I won't go out of my way and be like, yeah, I'm going to go watch it again. Um, but, I mean, obviously, the characters, Nicholas Holt, he was a prick. I can't oh, stand him. <laughs> like, but that was his job. That's what he was supposed yeah. to be doing. And he nailed it because when um, Chef come, brings him up, I was like, you're the man to do this, do you to do that. Oh my god, that was so just tense. Tears new one. I was just like, <laughs> love that. That was so tense, wasn't it? When he was making it was the um, when he was talking about something, he just started crying. Yeah, and yeah. Margot was just like, are you, you crying? It's like, yeah, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, what a tosser. <laughs> I, I was just Absolutely. like, oh my Belly. god. But I straight away when they were on the when they got off the boat and um. They're on like the walkway, and the the hostess was like, "Tyler's such a body, I miss." So, and he was like, "Oh no, it's not her." So yeah. I was straight away thinking, "Right, well, who's this other person?" And I thought exactly. the other person was going to come in at some stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I was expecting, or like it to be their their place or something, or yeah. it was going to be his daughter, or but That's I want to know I who this thinking. other person was, like if they had anything to do with it. But obviously, in the end. She wasn't in it, so. But that's why it was great because it, it uh, that's also when you watch it twice, you you're rewarded for that because then you, in in hindsight you know why there's that sort of stutter at the start when they say, "Oh, yeah. where's the whatever," and it's because obviously Anna Taylor Joy's character was she wasn't really like the bad guy, you know, or the person no. that he he loathed. So his plans were already messed up because it was all like I say, he we, as you know, he's he's tailored every meal specifically to the people there and every word he wants to say is tailored to the people there, the message mm-hmm. he wants to give across. So um, that just to begin with is already gave you a sense of, oh, there's something else going on here. There's a bit of awkwardness and there's something to do with Nicholas Holt's character as well that he hasn't let on to, which, uh, yeah, I thought was great. Yeah. When you, when you found yourself like chuckling at first, do you think, am I supposed to be finding this funny? <laughs> I'm not actually sure. Like, yeah, because it was so it, dark. <laughs> it is, and it's slow to begin with, isn't it? So you've got the the claps where he claps to introduce. You're then, you, I think the first one made a lot of people jump in the cinema. They didn't mm-hmm. expect it. And then obviously they deliberately quiet, quiet down the, the, the whole movie. So you, that clap really has an impact on you. So I was like, okay, they're, they're, they're doing something here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, you don't really start laughing properly until it re- till shit goes down, do you really? Yeah, so there and, then... and the, uh, the the titles on the screen when they tell you what. Oh, it's, just it's, hilarious! It's gradually, yeah. just get funnier and funnier, and I like, yeah, oh, I'm with you now. I, and his mother, I think it was was it Tyler's the mother bit was the bit where you're sort of laughing a bit, aren't you? But you're also kind of like hor- in horror of it too because he's being brutally honest about her as a mother. Oh yeah, and yeah. Is, that, is that thing is like, am I meant to laugh here, or is he just bearing his soul yeah. to strangers? Oh, I, I just meant the point where you, well, you see, he's just one cutaway shot of her walking across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the next yeah. thing was, it, was it the um, the bread where he printed the pictures on as well? Was it the bread? Yes. Or what was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was like the yeah. the wraps oh, or something yeah. or something like that. They're crimes or something. Yeah. Amazing. Um, that was a bit like we got to know who this Margot was. Yeah. Obviously, the picture with. Um, with the old Moses man. fella, the old fella, yeah. It's like, Leave who's that? Person. It's not yeah. me. And it's like, oh, that's who that is. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it was weird yeah, how cool. like she ended up being connected as well. Yeah. yeah so she, she, she was she, the outlier, but she was she that's was still right. in it. But she was still somehow, yeah, linked in. Yeah. It was yeah. Well that's why 
it been makes too sense, much aware like for people who haven't seen it, but it's hard oh, yeah. to talk Spo- about without Spo- spoiler warning. Spoilers. warning yeah. Nah, it, spoilers. No, I'm talking about the film. I I'm know. watching it now. She, yeah, because she was obviously connected. <laughs> um, she was connected to that world because uh, Holt had obviously hired her with no. She had no knowledge of food really. She liked what she liked, but she wasn't as pretentious as Holt was in regard to her taste. So it was good that they included that because the fact that Holt hired her because she was um, like an escort, wasn't she? So it yeah. did make sense in a way that she would have worked with another person that was there. So I thought that was a clever little touch to keep it connected. And, and it created some friction between that, um, you know, the older couple. They were always, mm-hmm. you know, there was that, you could see there was that deep seated sort of hatred on her end for him. And, oh I mean, God. It was right at the fantastic. beginning, before they got on the boat, when she looked up and saw him and she's like, oh, shit. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. Didn't think anything of it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you see why. Film, and honestly, oh, Jesus, it's so... so <laughs> I'm the director of Ali G in the house, by the way. <laughs> it's just it incredible, actually, isn't it? It's seriously, uh, Mark Mylod, he directed Ali G in the house. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and a million things on TV. He's, he's like, he's pretty damn prolific, but I kind of believe those two films are connected. By the director. It's just mental. If they got Sasha Baron Cohen, then it would have been a little bit better. <laughs> I would have watched it that yeah. second time, maybe. It wasn't Ralph Fiennes all along. It was, uh, <laughs> it was yeah. Aaron Cohen playing the part. Um, she comes in like Ali G in the house now. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Adelstein was uh, Ted in it. He, obviously, I the first time I saw him was in Prison Break. Um, yeah, he was a right weasel, isn't he, in Prison Break? Mm. I haven't seen that. Oh, you've not seen Prison Break? No, I know. I haven't seen it. That will give you an idea of Paul Adelstein's range. I really know, I know. Fantastic. Let's just stop now. I need to go. I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm terrible for things like that. It's a big investment now, obviously, because it's a long series. finished and it's been out a while, but worth it. I'm, yeah. I'm going to watch it again anyway, sort of. Just for Paul Adelstein, because I think he's just so... <laughs> he's such a good actor. Like, everything I've seen him in since, I always go back to Prison Break and just think, you are just so damn good. Yeah. It just disappears into each role. And why isn't Anya Taylor-Joy my wife? I think I, I text that, didn't I? I, <laughs> I think it's shocking that they were not married. I think yeah, they gave us a smoke. And... <laughs> yeah, that was, that was interesting, wasn't it? Because the minute that, that was our first introduction to Nicholas Holt's character where he was getting on at her for ruining her taste palette. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. okay, there's something to do with this guy, isn't there? There's, yeah. <laughs> Then when he slapped the hand away yeah. so he could yeah. take the food oh, Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I, I also I, I enjoyed that movie for that reason of like it was telling those people that get on Instagram and take pictures of their dinner before they eat it. It's like he, he's talking to you here as well. And there's people <laughs> that want to they go to an expensive restaurant that they can't really afford just to say they went there as well. He's talking to you. So it had yeah. a real world message of those people that like, don't be so pretentious and stop, you know, uh, trying to show off this life you actually don't live just so you can say it, just so you can try and look, make yourself look better. It was kind of, I feel a lot of people might have been like, hmm, I think you might be talking <laughs> about in it. in this yeah. heat. A little bit, yeah. yeah. It's me. A little bit. <laughs> um, so, I watched yeah. a, a lot of uh, videos on YouTube of after like people breaking it down and what they yeah. thought it meant. And I was like, yeah, you, you can you can literally apply the message to anything. Absolutely. There's so many layers to it. It's, ah, uh, what a, Thanks, Crippy, for, for making this <laughs> watch that. I Honestly, it's, it was on my list of things I wanted to watch, but probably yeah. one of those I would never have gotten around to. It's the watch. same with me. I, I miss so many movies like that that I would personally enjoy, and I'm so glad I just said, let's, what, let's watch it. You know, I yeah. took one out on a limb. Normally, I, I'll watch a trailer of something, and I'll go, yeah, let's just watch that one. But this was one where, say, like you, I went in pretty much blind. And um, as I'm watching, I was like, okay, this is a bit slow, but it's interesting, because I know something's going to happen. They're setting the scene. And then, yeah, what, a third of the way through, it's like, oh, okay, this is going to be this kind of movie now. And it's, yeah. yeah. And I just I enjoyed it. I just really enjoyed it. The trailer does a good job as well of not giving anything away, but just letting you know that all isn't what it seems on, in this restaurant. It did. But and, I was worried it wasn't going to make that. its money back because it was yeah. too, it was almost too, it was, it was interesting enough. We think, okay, maybe. But I, I worry that um, with our modern day sensibilities, that people just won't watch a movie if it's not sp- sort of spelled out to them. Because mm-hmm. I, I feared that that movie wouldn't get seen by a lot of people just because it didn't look interesting enough from the trailer. 
Because you don't want to tell them what happened to spoil it, but no. you also want to give them something to go, oh, there's shit's going to go down here. So don't don't assume it's all boring. You know, there's going to be a lot more to this. Yeah, I think I kind of um, went in with it with an idea of what I thought might be going on in the background. Yeah. They, because even the, the synopsis doesn't give anything away. It's just like no. things unravel. It gets a bit sinister. So I had ideas in my head thinking, well, it's going to be this. It was nothing like what I thought it was going to yeah. be. <laughs> yeah, same. <clears throat> and I think that's for the better because I think what I was thinking was probably just too on the nose and nowhere yeah. near as clever as what we got. Absolutely. Mine would have just been about, um, I thought you might have had, um, he might have cut up some of the people and served them as food. That's what, kind of, that's what exactly I was kind what of Exactly what I was yeah. thinking. <laughs> yeah. And it's not, not very clever, subvert. right on the no. nose. <laughs> exactly. And if I can guess that straight away, then it's too obvious an it's idea, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad that's not just me then. That, that was, you know, <laughs> it was either that or it was going to do something with the food and kill kill them off individually. Exactly, slowly, yeah. Slowly by yeah. slowly, but... Yeah. Uh, or it was just going to be nothing. <laughs> Poison the food. Just a bunch of pretentious wankers and a lot of pretentious food. <laughs> just like, come down with me, but <laughs> more sinister. <laughs> like, like Chef, but more up market. Yeah. Which is another good film about food, actually. Chef. I don't think uh, I've seen that. Sean Favreau. Oh, oh, right. That's going on the list. Um, yeah. It's basically just John Favreau gets his food truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's as simple as a premise I can make it, but it, it's quality. And uh, don't ever go in watching it while you're hungry. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> what else have we been watching over the last week then? Anything? Nothing? Uh, Avatar, I saw. I've seen Avatar twice. You've seen that twice? I've seen it in, twice. Uh, long slog. Six hours of your life gone, then. I know. Jeez. Yeah. I, I, I went with, um, yeah, took a date to the first one, then took my kids to the second one. Um, you liked it more? They, they stuck, they stuck, <laughs> they stuck, <laughs> they, they, they loved it. It was quite, um, I was actually thinking because it's, t- it's the movie sort of tailored towards family, isn't it? They want, they clearly want family to watch it, but I was thinking, well, if you want family to watch, you want people to bring their kids. Why is there so much? Why is there so many guns? And why is there like the <laughs> swearing in it? I felt that could have been taken out because people watching Avatar aren't watching it for swearing and watching it for gun violence. They're watching it for the night journey. They watch it for the spectacle. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I thought that was a bit gratuitous. And I know that. Yeah, he wants to bring a bit of edge to it because he knows there are going to be some guys that get dragged to Avatar that he might think, "Oh, men aren't going to be able to focus on this unless there's some action." But I think if you're watching Avatar, like you say, you're watching it for the spectacle, the visual effects, you're, you're, in, you're involved, aren't you? If you enjoy that, if you enjoyed the first one, you're going to absolutely love the second one because it just goes deeper into it. At the end of the day, it's a fantasy film and fantasy doesn't always absolutely. have guns. In fact, fantasy rarely needs to have guns. So it, like... it should have been just spears. It made no sense at all to have. I know you could say that is what colonialism is, where the, you know, the, the Europeans came with guns and that's how they were so effective. But also, this is a fictional story, so mm. you know you could have your enemies be fictional. It's your people. own version of gun. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. But is it worth saying? Because uh, it's, it's another one that I'm just going to wait for until it comes on streaming. Well, I'm. I, I'll be honest. I I I can stand it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if if you enjoy fantasy, you're going to love it because it. The, the reason why I watched it with my girls is because there was less they they lose concentration quite quickly when adults start talking off screen when there's no there's nothing happening and I saw the trailer and I was like, well, having watched the movie beforehand I knew that the majority of the movie is just set in that world so I knew that they would enjoy that because there's no sort of dead talking with adults where they would find it boring so they'd enjoy it and I think if you enjoy fantasy sci-fi you will you will definitely get a kick out of it because they just go deep into it i just find it way too long needlessly too long and i find the story is sort of a bit too basic for how much sort of clipe that james cameron's getting for it how many years guess, was between the first and the second one 13 years or something 13 years and well you know so i mean i've not watched the first one i didn't plan on watching the second one but if it's taken 13 years to not even nail a good storyline <laughs> that's the thing it's the first one wasn't so, a good storyline no it's so I think 13 so years and you basically I'm, I actually mean, I've not watched it but if he's going to do the same thing from the first one and add on a little bit more what's the point yeah 
he's it's I uh, it's one of those where it's like obviously I'm I'm very cynical with that because I just, I didn't I didn't hate the first one as much as I do the second one. I'm more cynical about the second one, but I just felt that the story was so basic, um, and it, it was annoying me more so that everyone was falling in love with it. Because even my brother said it's one of his favorite movies now, and I, I'm watching. I'm just thinking, how? Like, you see a better people version that of this? Lovely, just, just for the oh, it's 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 just just something oh, completely man. different. It's that I'm yeah. like, I'm going to be that person that goes, oh, it's my favorite film of all time. Black Panther, perfect example. Well, the, yeah. so bad, but yeah. everyone jumped on it. It was like, oh, it's the best film ever. It's, it's not. No. But you want to, you want to, it's the one is it where you, you're watching it and you're like, I didn't enjoy this. Then everyone around you says they love it. So you're thinking, maybe we need to give this a chance. Yeah. What did I miss? Did I watch something? Yeah. Else, <laughs> yeah. It is, it's, um, so yeah, Avatar was one where, but I could see why people enjoy it. It, was, it wasn't a movie where I thought, how are people getting a kick out of this? Because I can totally see why. I just felt it was very cookie cutter. You could see that everything in the movie was. I had a committee of 20 people saying, oh, no, I think they'll put, they'll appreciate this more. Oh, yeah, yeah, they'll, go, they'll kick it, kick out of that. It was, you could see it's just tailor-made to be as broad as possible to get everyone involved. Um, and, yeah, it wasn't really for me. It wasn't for me, but they're going to bring out two more movies now, so. At least two. Yeah. At least yeah. two. We said he's written six. Because there's the first one's about um, the, the sky, the sky planets. Second one's about water. I think the third one's going to be about fire. So he's almost copying the actual Avatar anime, <laughs> the, the, the cartoon <laughs> version of it, having that like grind, be, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah, no, I, I enjoyed the first one, but I think I was just caught up in the spectacle of it all being 3D and it looking. As it was as different. It the actual yeah. film itself and the storyline is so basic yeah so bland and being done before yeah you didn't we, we get bring it. anything environmental story. story wise yeah i know an unobtainium yeah an, an embarrassing I, name an embarrassing name that to me is just like oh we'll put that placeholder we'll come up with something later and then he accidentally filmed it and thought oh shit i know oh I'll leave it in this <laughs> number two is worse in a way for that i don't know can i spoil it a little bit oh crack on it, yeah it's, okay, so this is a, it's a tiny spoiler. That, again, this is the thing with Avatar. It's not going to ruin your experience because you're not watching it for a surprise, are you? There's no twists in, in Avatar movies, whatever. So in this, there are these... Um, I think they're like... They're not whales. They're called something else. But they're basically... They're designed to look like whales. So your brain goes, hmm, that looks like a whale. It's similar to a whale. But if you say that, people that watch it go, it's not a whale because they're trying to make, they're trying to pretend that they're doing something new and fresh with the idea. It's not. It's a big <laughs> water creature that looks like a whale, makes noises like a whale, and it's designed to make you think of a whale. So these, there are people that m sort of mine these whales and basically kill them just to suck their ether, which gives um, the power to grant um, permanent life or, yeah, you can live for another 100 years or something ridiculous, right? An embarrassing, embarrassing idea for a movie. And um, and in it, he says, oh, yeah, this one tiny little syringe, this tiny syringe, th yeah, that'll cost 80 million on the black market. And you're thinking, Did there's you only about me? 10 people that can afford that. So how are you? How can you say it's worth that money? <laughs> it, was, it was honestly, it was embarrassing that you just thought uh, they thought of the largest number they could to try and sound cool. And it had the opposite effect for me. I was like, this is all this is honestly <laughs> pathetic. It really is. So, so yeah, we're not bothered with Avatar. No, but I, w I would love to get your thoughts though because I, I do feel that I'm in a minority sometimes because I knew that people were going to love Avatar 2 and I kind of knew I wasn't going to like it because I didn't like the first one. So I, I'm there coming out of it and I want to just slag it off and I just hear people behind me say, oh yeah, that was great. Yeah, I loved that. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, oh no. Like, so, I reckon yeah. people just jump on the bandwagon like, oh, it's so great, it's so great. And they're like, <laughs> in the head, it's not, but yeah, yeah, it was great, weren't it? And yeah. the only thing for one person to go, well, actually, it wasn't. And they're yeah. like, because they've already said it's great, they can't go, actually, yeah, it wasn't that good to be fair. So then I just, just like, wish I could like it. I really do. But it's just, it's too, you can just see what they're, what they're doing with it. It's just too broad and too obvious that it's just like, yeah, this feels this was made for the lowest common denominator person. It, it doesn't have to, to think make... too hard. Absolutely, yeah. Because it yeah. reminds me of when um, the Joker. Have you both seen the Joker? Yeah, yeah. With, yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. So when that came out, everyone was like, "I mean, you can get your opinions in a minute." Like, but everyone was like, mm -hmm. "Oh, it's it was one of the other. It was the best film ever, or yeah. 
wasn't that good. Yeah. I'll be honest, I love it. I love it. Mental yeah. health stuff. Yeah, I did. I did love it. I'll be honest, I did love it, and I, um, I was kind of glad I loved it because I thought oh, that's going to be one of those movies where I didn't like it, but everyone else around me did. But yeah. I watched it. and I was like, yeah, I can see why people do love this movie. Yeah, I, I didn't think it, it was. Well. The, yeah, it wasn't. I don't think it was the greatest movie ever either, like you say, Liam. Um, but I also didn't think it was rubbish. So there, like you say, people wouldn't. There wasn't the middle ground for a lot of people. They wouldn't just say, yeah, it was a great movie. It wasn't you know top tier, but it was. Near, it was close to it. Um, yeah, it had its pretentious well. moments. Absolutely, it did. Yeah, I think a lot of people had an issue with like the pretentious moments where you could see it was trying to get to they're trying to get an Oscar with some scenes. Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, I get why people are sort of rolling your eyes at that. It took yeah. away from how good it was in um, some regards. But yeah, like I say, when it comes to the thought of that movie and how subtle some things are, Avatar just looks like a part of crap compared to it because there's just no <laughs> subtlety. There's no subtlety whatsoever. It's there's a voiceover that comes and goes throughout the thing, and it's it's not required because he's talking about things you're watching on the screen, so mm. it just feels like you're a moron. It really does. It feels like you're a moron. Like oh oh bright colors. Oh look blue. Oh they're swimming. Oh a new creature. Oh it it just feels like oh a was, whale. Yeah, it is. Not a whale. Like, <laughs> a whale, but they're not calling it a whale. They're calling it something else because J- James Cameron is so subversive. It's yeah, I, it was. I felt, you know, a lot of people worked hard on that movie. I get it. But, yeah, it just it's hard to be proud of it because it feels like it was created just for, yeah, just for people that weren't, that don't really like movies. It's more so just to suck <laughs> them in. Uh, right. So we've, we've discussed one of the best movies of the last year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it made me so angry, yeah. <laughs> uh, TV-wise, have you watched anything new TV or are you just like me and you watch Family Guy on repeat over and over again? Oh, terrible! No, I haven't watched it. Terrible. Yeah. Oh, nice. Since terrible, the um, what was the what was the series that we watched? The uh, Kaleidoscope. No, oh, Kaleidoscope. Yeah, Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope yeah. as well. Um, the one on BBC. What was that one? The Traitors. The Traitors. Since the Traitors, oh. I've watched Kaleidoscope because we watched it, but I've not. Nothing's nothing stood out for me yet. No, uh, we should talk about Kaleidoscope actually, seeing as the. Uh... The one that we recorded last week, I'll never see a later day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the trailer. You watched it, Chris. I'm Kelly. You watched Kelly, didn't you, Chris? Uh, yeah, oh, I've, no, I've, I've watched a couple. I've, I've seen some of it. I've seen <laughs> seen that one episode. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we did tell them last week not to bother with the rest. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Seen lots. That of was that. the general <laughs> consensus, wasn't it? We did. We did shoot uh, a one of these last week, but it, it just didn't flow right, so we didn't put it out. And the idea was we're all going to watch Kaleidoscope and give our thoughts on it. And Liam and me managed to make it through. Creepy got one down, and yeah. um, the ultimate bottom line is <laughs> it's just not worth eight hours of your life. Yeah. See, I've it's saved just... seven hours of my life. I didn't waste that time. Exactly. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a heist film. A heist film with a gimmick broken up into seven or eight sections. So you can watch them in any order, but really you should watch them in a specific order. It was just a yeah, 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 it's it's annoying. That you can watch them in any order, it makes no sense. No. Nah. Because I, I got bored halfway through and I needed that one that got me back in should have been the first one because it would have I would have understood the rest of it straight away. Yeah, it tells you who just, everyone is and what no the motivations are. Exactly. Big exactly that why I understood it, but it's just yeah. Not for me. And it's, it didn't bring anything new. It just had a gimmick. That was it. Yeah. Um, My issue is that it was well I, those it. kind of movies that, that Netflix always bring out these kind of movies that are really polished. And these these characters are meant to be criminals, but yet they're so pretty and they're so quirky and they've always got the right thing to <laughs> say. And and... Yeah. And it's like, this isn't how what heist people are like. It just, it just seems to be... I know they're trying to make it palatable for a wider audience, but I can't stand that. <laughs> I can't, that's kind of what makes it unwatchable in a way. It's because you're just watching it like you know what they're doing. They're just trying to make this so everyone can watch and get a kick out of it. But you're talking about criminals. Make this more edgy, you know. Yeah, make them bash you. Yes, look, look at the casting. You've got you've got Giancarlo Esposito. We know what he can do. Always plays just a bad let guy. Let him act. Yeah, <laughs> just let let him go deeper into that and be, you know. So yeah, they had one unlikable character played by Jai Courtney, but he was just like, yeah, he was a caricature of an unlikable guy. He played yeah. the part well. From minute one, you know what's going to happen from him. He's going to yeah. be a liability, isn't he? He's going to steal. He'll lie. 
Um, he's and he's not self-aware, so he doesn't realize that he's the problem in the team. He's the one that they want to get rid of, and but he's going to be angry and he's going to do this because and you know he'll have little character growth because that's just who he is. Exactly. Um, yeah, it, it, like yeah. I say, like Jeremy Renner's character from the town, but Jeremy Renner's character from the town was so much better, so that's much better than Joe Courtney's was. And you didn't even watch it at all. No, <laughs> just <laughs> you know yeah, that? I. That's the thing. I will. That's one thing I'll praise the Cloud Scope for is where um, the character motivations are obvious. They make that very clear in the first one. So I wasn't. It wasn't like anything he does later in the series would surprise me because they made it pretty clear that he's happy to almost get the heist completely blown apart by his own greed. So mm-hmm. when when they set the tone in the first, I think it was Yellow he did that in where he tried to steal those diamonds. If he can do that already, yeah, there's no limits to how low he'll go in search of rich and, you know, get rich treasures and whatnot. But, yeah, it just, like you say, it felt so one note and so obvious to me. It tried to subvert expectations. It, failed. it reminded me of, um, well, not in terms of what it was like, but trying to get that idea was Black Mirror. Oh, you yeah. watched it. Obviously, Love the interactive one. So, obviously, and the that one. Yeah, so you can watch it in any order, but with Black Mirror, obviously you're choosing the next outcome and stuff. So that's yeah. what I thought it was going to be like. Right. It was. It, it just wasn't. Mm. No. Total gimmick. Could have done without it. Wouldn't have been any better or worse for it. it was just yeah. Just middle of the yeah. road. Could have watched something else instead. Yeah. <laughs> Black Mirror. <laughs> Did anybody watch this? Uh, the oh, last episode was... started. Yeah. First episode um, came out Monday morning, Monday night. Have any of you just watched it yet? Or? I'm not have you seen it the game? Well, but I was going to say it's a game, isn't it? That's what I was thinking of at first. Yeah, uh, obviously. Yeah, I've neither seen it or played it. I say I played the game when it came out. That was like 10 years ago. Um, I remember bits of it. I remember quite a lot of it, but not everything. But watching the first episode of the series, they have stuck very close to the source material, which is just fantastic. Wasn't so it a rare. PlayStation exclusive, though? I'm sure it was, it was yeah. PlayStation. Yeah, that's why I've not played it. I think I wanted to play it because I thought it looked good. I uh, got a PlayStation Two play it. <laughs> <laughs> that and Uncharted, and I was like, right, I'm a, I'm having a PlayStation just for these two. Um, so how did you find it? I've seen it. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic, mm. absolutely brilliant. Um, it's not often that video game adaptations translate well onto the screen, but so far, yeah. this one's after a damn good start. Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's like a, a moment in the first episode, and it's also at the start of the first game. Absolutely destroys you, mm. like emotionally, just ruins you. And they managed to recreate it in the TV show to the sort of same effect. I was like, right. So is I'm it in. something that's coming out weekly then? Yeah, unfortunately, they're doing it weekly. I was hoping they were just going to drop the lot. Yeah, the whole lot. Is this, yeah. Is this all on um, I was on Brian with this one. Was that what? Sorry, I was on something else. What's it on? Sky Atlantic, HBO. Oh, Sky. All right, well, no TV give it a well. Definitely yeah. give it a watch. Um, like I, said, I wanted to play, play the game, good. so from watching it instead. It's it made me want to go back and play, play the game, game again. <laughs> I went and looked on Steam. Quite what it's designed to do, yeah. Quid. yeah. Get some gamers back on it. Exactly. Yeah. There's, um, a, there's a, Dungeons, a Dungeons & Dragons trailer as well that I saw. Yeah, that and it actually so looks good. It does, yeah. I was like, wow, I kind of want to see this. kind of uh, want to see this. It looks actually really good. I was surprised. Yeah, me too. Uh, well, not then. Have you watched Stranger Things? Because that is yes. essentially... First you watched season. Pretty? Yeah, I think I've seen the first two seasons. Have you not watched the last one? I'll be honest, I got turned off by season two because it got goofy. No, the last one, I'm the done. last one is... I mean... I don't know if Ashley was agreed, but the last one was it was very, very good. It was a last, yeah, season four was the best by miles. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm with you on season two. So it does good. get goofy. Yeah, yeah, that's what really took really, me off with it. I was so unsure about it when it came out, so I never watched it. I think it got to season two, and I smashed all the number one, smashed two. It might have been season three that I got into it then, actually. Because mm. I watched them all, and I was like, yeah, two is a bit, it's a bit long winded, but yeah, number four was, yeah. Okay, so give it a chance. I was the same. I did season one in, started watching two, got sick of it. Yeah. Um, fancied giving it another go when season three came out. No, when season four came out, I ignored season three completely. 
Yeah. Uh, I thought I can't just jump in at season four. So I watched yeah, from yeah. one all the way through and oh when you look at it, it's literally just kids chasing imaginary dragons just, or just like which I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. that that didn't sell it to me. I was just like, is it weird this? And then everyone was talking about <laughs> it. And then one of the mates was like, I know what it sounds like, but trust me, watch it. And I was like, you know what, I'll I'll do it then. Yeah. I'm I'm hooked. Well, it's I've seen better to sit in a binge and do the whole lot. I I watched I've seen Super Eight, which is probably a movie I should have put on the, the list of things for us to see. Um, Still there, man. Yeah, yeah. So, because that's um, a movie about I won't spoil it, but it's a movie is similar mold to Stranger Things, where it's kids. It's very similar, yeah. Yeah, and sci-fi, and, but I think that's it's better to be honest. Um, so yeah, it gave me that voice. So I knew I'd like Stranger Things, but yeah, just a second went second season went in a direction I wasn't too happy with and I felt it, they weren't it was just going to veer off into silliness just out, and to be entertaining so I just avoided three and four yeah three brings you back in and four gets its claws okay. right in here that's Absolutely. good well then they clearly listened to criticism because there's, there's a lot of people like me that said a similar thing that they find two just a bit different totally yeah. totally different weird decisions in it you know with the the goth phase that was just cringeworthy I think that's season two <laughs> That was just weird. I get what they were trying to do, that she was going to go off and do her own thing, but it was giving me uh, Toby Maguire vibes in Spider-Man 3, where it's like, kind of, I know what you're trying to do, but it looks really stupid to put it on screen. Yeah. So that was that was just like embarrassing. And then, yeah, I, it just turned me off with the series after that. Pretty annoyed that you've had to put that Toby Maguire thing back in our collective memories. Apologies to remind you all <laughs> I know. I remember looking for the TV the other day and that came up when he just turned and goes... <laughs> <laughs> I, think I remember sitting watching that for the first time and just looking around the room going is anyone else seeing this no. is anybody seeing this Spider-Man it's it's them, like, if it's on and someone walks in the room it's like what are you watching exactly because <laughs> it is goofy Spider-Man obviously but that that did push it a bit didn't it that's it just so cringe luck with that. so uh, cringe yeah um <laughs> So, Krippy, are you you're much of a gamer then? Um, no, I'll be honest. You, no, I'm, I'm I'm the worst really because I I don't, I don't I the only games I play were just you know FIFA back in the day. I never played any of those cool uh, RPGs or whatever. I played Rayman. Rayman's a game I play, but there's no Rayman movie coming worms. out. I don't believe Worms. Yeah, worms. <laughs> Lemmings. Oh, worms. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, see. all those because there was that Tom Holland movie, wasn't there? Where uh, I can't remember what it was called. Is that the one with Uncharted? Uncharted, that's yeah, it. Yeah, Uncharted, yeah. Yeah, Uncharted. And I've, I've not seen that or played that, so just that went over my head as well. So, yeah, can, I'm not the worst, You can probably really. watch that film without having played the games because it's so far detached. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I watched a film the other week, actually. I watched that, so... Yeah. I didn't, I, I, I didn't hate it. It's savage. Um, I'm a big fan of the games, but uh, I didn't hate oh, it. Oh, there's Mark Wahlberg in it as well, that's why. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. I'm okay. trying to think of who it was. That doesn't work. Mark Wahlberg as uh, Sully just didn't work. <laughs> he was originally cast as Nathan Drake, which also wouldn't have worked. So basically, Mark Wahlberg shouldn't have been anywhere near it. Is, is what he I'm only hates seeing typecast, but it's the only role <laughs> he seems to fit, isn't it? Yeah. He, but he plays the same character in everything. So yeah. Have you seen Pain yeah. and Gain? No, I've just remembered of Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. that's what I was Johnson. thinking of with The Rock and then um, yeah. who's Falcon? Yeah, yeah, Anthony Mackie. Yeah. Anthony yeah. Mackie from Eight Mile, oh, Papa Doc. I was going to say Papa Doc. Oh, two <laughs> yeah, back hilarious. as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's when I first saw I him. Yeah, the first time I saw Pain and Gain, I wasn't impressed with it at all. No, I wasn't until halfway through yeah. when I realised that there was actually a story behind this. Because I didn't yeah. feel that it was going anywhere initially, and then yeah, then obviously when I, when I realised it was a true story, it was also oh, yeah. okay. This That's is when I got interesting. interested as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Still ridiculous, but yeah. Hey, of course, it's Michael Bay. I know. <laughs> you don't get subtlety with Michael Bay. <laughs> no, but it was kind of stupid enough where it was entertaining for me. I don't think it's yeah. a great movie, but it, if long as I, if I'm laughing, even ironically, I'll take it. Doesn't matter how. As long as, if I'm enjoying it somehow, I'll take it. Which brings us on nicely to your mate Neil Breen. Tell everybody about Neil Breen, mate. What, a, what Neil a Breen? 
<laughs> he yeah, he was an architect and might still be, but he did quite well as in in that world and um, made a lot of money. And then he thought, hmm, what should I do with this money? I'll make movies. So he makes low budget movies, and he lacks a bit of self awareness. So he creates movies without little input from outsiders, and these are his passing projects, and they're thoroughly entertaining. Not for the reasons he hopes they are, because they're more so so bad it's good type movies, <laughs> but they are very entertaining. Very entertaining every, indeed. Every one of them seems to be shot on a green screen, doesn't it? Like just in a studio. Yeah, nearly screen screen studio. Um, and oftentimes they're very similar plot where he'll be um, om- omnipotent in some regard. I think in one of the movies he actually plays a cyber Jesus character. Uh, and it's always the, the, the message of the story is so, so not subtle at all. Where <laughs> it'll be either to do with the environment or about uh, criminal politicians that kind of thing very basic stuff stuff that kids would do at primary school um the acting is always um horrendous because you can see that the actors aren't given any direction at all they're just given a script and sometimes some people try and give it their best shot but just the way it's filmed (laughs) the decisions he makes there's so many close-ups as well and he has a thing about filming people's feet a lot of feet shots because i think it saves him money having to pay an actor for their Obviously, because if you show their face, you have to pay them, don't you? But if you show feet, you can use the same people over and over again, and then you don't. They can pretend it's just a different person. So there's loads of stock oh. footage as well. Is this stock your way as long as you've got a foot fetish, Crippy? <laughs> I think he <laughs> has. I think he has, to be fair. But he also uses loads of stock footage and stock music, which is just fantastic because it's so obvious what he's doing. He'll have like a stock video in the background that is rendered completely differently to his own um, character. And then he'll just basically Photoshop his character into the scene. And it looks terrible, but it's, and you think he must know this doesn't look good, but he really is oblivious to it. Or he was when he first brought his movies out. Um, it reminds me of the Birdemic, uh, the director who was trying to pretend that the birds in Birdemic were actually real. And it's, it's like, good. does he, does he <laughs> believe that? Does he really believe it looks good? So, Neil Breen is absolutely fantastic. Really, never, his movies are hilarious. Through, yeah, I've never sat through a full one of his films, but I went down a horrible rabbit hole on YouTube just watching yeah. trailers and clips. Amazing, amazing. And I, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I don't know it's if hilarious. I could sit through a, a, an entire film of it. Like. But I, I would say not all of them are funny, entertaining. Some of them are bad and they're hard to watch because they're bad. So, But like The Room... But Tom Rizzo, that's funny all the way through because it's um, created in a way where you're just laughing, like thinking, does he not realize how weird that sounds? That's kind of so. I, the movie I thought is like that is um, Fateful Findings. That would be mm-hmm. the Neil Breen movie I'd recommend for anyone to watch, where you get a real essence of what Neil Breen's all about. There's some iconic moments in there. They touch upon some heavy subjects, badly so. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but it's it's hilarious. And I can watch that over and over again because it's just so funny. It's so <laughs> funny all the way through. Uh, yeah. I'm, putting it on, I'm putting it on the list, lads. On the list of things to watch. If you've got a yeah. spare hour and a half, you just want something goofy uh, and to watch. And maybe you've had a drink or you're under <laughs> some psychedelics. Watch Faithful for my <laughs> <laughs> Did you go down I the rabbit hole as well, Liam, or did you? Have you not looked into him? I've, yet? I've never. I don't even know who this guy is. Oh man! It's, it's honestly your 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 life in a different never world. Again. I can't. Yeah. I, must, I still can't believe what I've seen. Like people have seemed to be floating in the sets because you just hadn't lined the feet up with the floor. Yeah. And they're in these yeah. lavish buildings that are like low res, and he's in four K. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And he has so nobody's um, got any direction, so they're all just stood there waiting for a cue. And he yeah. doesn't put that out. <laughs> no, it stays in. It stays in. And and sometimes the sound mixing is off as well. Sometimes, yeah, you know, you'll, the sound is off. The volume is differs. And also, he um he'll often copy paste sound clips from people. So like a scream, and obviously, it sounds terrible because we don't say anything the same way twice. So, yeah. it's yeah, it's it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Oh. If the faithful finding comes up in this random picker at the end of the year, um, honestly, you know, but I, I, don't, I don't think you'll be disappointed because it's just hilarious. You'll <laughs> you'll recognise that it's a poorly constructed movie, but it's entertaining just by how funny it is and how crazy the uh, how crazy the story goes. It's frightening. In fact, I think now I think the time has come to uh, to pick next week's target. 
<laughs> um, I'm praying so it comes got, up. We've got a list that we've thrown together here. Um, let's just pick a random one. Hang on, I'm on the wrong screen. We can see it. Yeah, we can see it. Fine. I was clicking on. I was clicking on the image. Oh, All right, lock. nice, nice. Lock for next week. Um, nice. I have seen this. It's obviously creepy. You've seen this because it's your choice. But a long um, time ago, though. So yeah, it'd be good to get a refresher. Yeah, Liam, have you seen it or not? I've not seen it now, but he said Tom oh, Hardy, so I'm all for yeah. it. But it's, uh, a, it's, it, it's a movie not like any others, Liam. Tom Hardy in a car. Um, yeah, there we go. the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. No, so, so, film, so is, it similar, is it similar to like Phone Booth? From the Phone Booth back in the day? Yeah, but with less, yeah, yeah, less action. Right. Yeah. 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 I love Phone Booth. That needs to go on the list as well. Almost put it on the list. Yeah, yeah. How did I forget that. I think I've, I think yeah. I've watched that so many times because it's always it used to always be on film for. Yeah, all yeah, weeks. yeah. I, I I loved it. Absolutely loved right. it. But yeah, no. Lock, honestly, Lock is one of those where, if we said the premise, it sounds boring. You think, how have you made a movie out of it? But it's gripping. Yeah. It really no, it's is. So good. Oh, it works. So you've seen Phone Booth, but have you seen Cellular? No, no, no. I have not. Cellular was an early Chris Evans thing, written by the ah. same guy who did Phone. Booth and uh, he handed the script to someone, and someone said, You've just written the same movie twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's essentially, uh, so you know, is a woman gets kidnapped, chucked into a, an attic where she's um, manages to find an old rotary phone. Oh. Um, I think I have seen this, smashes oh. it and hits all the buttons, you know, and ends up on a f- random phone yeah. call with Chris yeah. Evans. Sure, and got, yeah, and he's running around the city. Oh, I've heard help. of this, yeah, I've heard of this. Is this where, he goes to, he's about to go under a bridge and he doesn't realise he slams on. Yeah, and yeah, it's I've Lewis, it. Lewis Little. I've seen it once, though. I've seen it once, yeah. and I don't know how old I was. I must have must be about 15, more than 15 years ago. Yeah, the guy whose car he takes is Lewis Litt from Suits as well. So I'm oh, I like it. List. Yes. They're worth watching, then. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it's oh, not. fantastic. Get it on the list. Yeah, get on the list. <laughs> but, uh, no, I like it. Damn good film. Well, not a damn good film. Just a good film. Good time. I like um, something a bit different now. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, it's one of those. That just it flew under the radar. Like mm. I got Welcome to the Jungle on uh, on my list, and it's I was Jason surprised. Jason Statham's in it. That's why. How can you say Jason Statham? Cellular. Because he's yeah. in it for about two minutes. That's why. I, that's why I watched <laughs> it. I think because it was Jason Statham. <laughs> yeah. Because he was on the cover. That's why. Yeah. Right, yeah, it's like I was saying about Welcome to the Jungle. It's a film that me and Liam have both seen. I didn't think he had, but it's on my list. I don't know if you've seen it. That also Brandon called Fraser. The Rundown. Oh. It's, like, it's one of those that had a title in England and a title in America. Okay. No, I've not it's, seen that. No, The Rock and uh, Sean William Scott. It's on the list. Oh, okay. Okay. It was just like it flew under the radar sort of film. Yeah, but it was actually... wouldn't be something I'd see if I saw The Rock and Sean William Scott on the front. To be honest, but <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't think that would be a good movie at all. That's the reason I watched it. It's, it's, kind, of, <laughs> it's kind of not, but it is. Yeah, again, if it entertains me, even if in an ironic way, that's fine by me. Oh, it'll entertain you. Don't you worry yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, I don't think I've got anything else for us this week. Um, you got anything? Is there anything we've missed? Anything that we were going to talk about? Not like a big one. It's good. No, we covered the menu, kaleidoscope, avatar. I got to slag off. <laughs> <laughs> and you two are both going to watch The Last of Us before next week as well. Oh, yes. There should be two episodes by next week, so that's good. Okay. Well, they, they I can do that. Uh, they sort of, I think we're getting them at like two o'clock in the morning on a Sunday night. So any day or any time on Monday, really. As you do. Right, okay. Yeah, I can do. Yeah, one a week's fine for me. I can do that. We can talk about yeah. each episode as we go. And obviously, we need to watch Lock before next week as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't wait. All right, then, boys. Um, we shall do this again next week. Uh, thanks for joining us. Catch you after. Cheers, Liam. <laughs>